Hey guys, so uh, I just felt led today to do a video on, I don't know how long it's going to last, I, I'll, I'll try to keep it fairly short, uh, but anyone that's watched some of my videos, you know how that can go, so uh, one thing leads to another, and, and there's there's tons of scripture to back up uh, things that I'm saying, and so, but I have to make the videos fairly long so y'all can kind of understand and grasp what I'm saying. Uh, I can't get it all in in 15, 20 minutes. So anyway, but today I'm going to do a video about tithing. OK, so uh, the Bible, uh, it, it teaches us that, that money is the root of all evil. OK, and so our whole lives, we've been going to church and we we stand up when they tell us to stand up. We sit down when, we, when they tell us to sit down. Uh, and it almost makes you feel guilty if you don't give something if you don't give something but it's always money they never ask for anything but money okay and and some of the smaller churches i i i get it you know i i kind of get that um that it takes money to keep everything going so anyway so i understand that but at the same time uh all through scripture Christ is, Christ is telling you, like, sell everything you have. Pick up your cross daily. Follow me. Okay, so money has become a huge worry in our everyday lives. And if we don't have enough money to pay the bills, and then we go to church, and then we feel guilty about not giving money, that's what this video is going to be about. Because our whole lives we've been taught that tithing is about money, when in fact... It has nothing to do with money. That's that's religion that has crept in, and they they've made you feel that way. And and it's all it's all about money. It's always been about money. Uh, the Bible also uses um, crops as tithing. Okay, you give ten percent of your crops. Okay, and and a lot of that is also not necessarily crops, but holding back ten percent of the seed from your crops so that way you can replant next year okay so but it's also a spiritual teaching too and we'll, we'll get into all that but you can't plant you can't plant crops without seed okay so if you gave if you gave everything all of your crops uh, away you didn't have you wouldn't have any seed to plant next year okay to feed your family so so we're going to get into this and I hope I can understand it in a way where you guys can grasp it and because it's not what we think. It's not what we've always been taught and told. And so tithing is a, so it can be a, um, a hair pulling conversation. Okay. So I just ask that you all bear with me and just, just listen um, to what I have to say on it uh, using the scripture and Anyway, and hopefully you get something out of it and hang on to the edge of your seats because here we go. Okay, so in we're going to start with a with a short video here. And so you all can kind of see what we're talking about here. This is uh, a lot of people's uh, favorite pastor right here. Fear of this, this coronavirus is, is faith in its ability to hurt you or kill you. Uh, <clears throat> the, 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 the fear of what are we going to do? I'm getting laid off at work. Hey, your job's not your source. Mm -hmm. If it is, you're in trouble. Jesus is your source. Whatever you do right now, don't you stop tithing. Mm. Don't you stop sowing offerings. Well, they won't let us go to church. Well, email it in there, text and give or something, but you get your tithe in that church. If you have to go take it down there and drop it off and unstick it under the door or something, right. you right. get that tithe in that church, you get that offering in that church, and then you go home and you do what we're supposed to do. Fear of this. Okay, so I love the guy... Uh, the guy that's with him too in the background and he's he's saying right 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 you know he's he's agreeing with everything he's saying 
That's what we need to stop doing. Uh, we need to stop agreeing with everything people say, including me, okay? As I've said in all my other videos, I don't claim to know everything. In fact, the more I learn, the more I, uh, the more dumb I feel, <laughs> honestly. Um, because I'm like, it's been right here in the Bible the whole time, and I've I've missed it. I've missed it all these years, okay? And and so anyway, it's just it's amazing how God works. And he he shows you he shows you things on his timing whenever he knows you are ready to receive it. Okay. And but you've got to have an open mind about receiving things. Okay. Because if you if you're just closed minded and and you've just been you're just going through your everyday life with what everyone's told you your whole life, leaning on that, you'll never understand what God's trying to teach you or show you. Okay. So you got to step back, step out of church if you have to. Okay. And uh out of religion and all that and step back and think about all these things that you've been told since you were a baby. Okay. So the first seven years of your life are like the most important uh, years of your life. So parenting, uh, parent. So I, I have a little girl now, and you know, and and for a while I was uh, I I was worried about having children. Okay, because not not for the not for the reason of raising a child is is difficult and stuff like that, and it does have its challenges. Yes, but. But it's that I didn't I don't want to fail them. That was my biggest fear. I, I didn't want to fail my children. And so anyway, and and now studying all this stuff, it's making me realize that you gotta you gotta get you gotta let God lead it. Okay. Um, but God has to lead you for you to lead them. Okay. He's not gonna force it on you. All right. So Anyway, but that's why the, the man is, is called to be the spiritual leader of the household, okay? And I'm not saying women are, uh, are anything uh, l less or bad or anything like that. In fact, like the, the greater man you have, there's even a greater woman standing behind him, you know? So that being said, it's, uh, God's got to take the reins on it, and he's got to show you how to raise that child. And, and the first seven years of that child's lifetime are, are critical, and so, and then that's usually around the age they start kindergarten. Okay. So, and then when they start kindergarten, that's when the, uh, that's when the Rockefeller indoctrination comes into play. Um, as soon as they walk in the classroom, they see a globe sitting on the desk and all this stuff. And so anyway, I'm getting, I'm getting kind of off the beaten track here, but, um, but anyway, uh, so God's got to take the reins on on your life and your children's life too, so that way you can raise your children the way that He uh, wants you to raise them. Okay, so, but there you saw Kenneth Copeland saying, "No matter what happens, keep sending that money. Keep sending that money. That way he can go buy him another jet. Okay, uh, he can go buy him another jet, and because I think he has three jets, and what's he use them for? You know." uh it's not it's not for it's not for spreading the gospel it's not for using them for god's work okay it's for it's for his own pleasure and so anyway i don't i i don't like talking bad about anybody okay um anyway e even if it's someone like that i i i don't want to talk bad about anybody and so but that being said, just you can't you can't ask people to keep sending money that they don't have. Okay, they keep raising the prices of things, and and the grocery store you go get three bags of groceries now for two hundred dollars. You know, and I don't I don't know how people are making it. I really don't. And so, uh, in in our little family, it's it's my it's me, uh, my wife, and and our little girl. And we still spend close to two hundred dollars a day, or excuse me, a week. Uh, sometimes even three hundred dollars a week on just us, just for groceries. And so, anyway, well, if you spend three hundred a week, that's twelve hundred dollars a month, okay? And so, how are people making it? And then you still got to make your mortgage payment. You still got to make all your bills. You still got to, if you have a truck payment, you still got to make the truck payment. 
and that's not including everything that breaks, okay, and you've got to get it fixed, okay, so, uh, and all the little things that come up, and then, oh, here, out of nowhere, here comes the insurance, you know, um, so that way, whenever you get in a collision, we won't help you, okay, so insurance is like the biggest scam there is. Man, I'm going to get in trouble for this video, but anyway, but insurance is, it, it's a scam. It's, um, they, it, they cover everything under the sun, until something happens. And then when something happens, oh, well, you know, we, we don't cover that. And so anyway, it's just one thing after another. And then taxes, right? Taxes upon taxes upon taxes. You're taxed for your taxes. You're taxed for doing your taxes. You're taxed on money you've already paid taxes on. It, it, it never ends, okay? So uh, I, I can't stand it when people say, uh, well, they're only they're still only taking like 10%. No, they're not. They're, first of all, for them to take income tax from you is illegal to begin with. Okay. So anyway, there, there was a revolutionary war fought over a 2% tax. Okay. Well, now we're up to a 10% income tax. Okay. But then you're taxed on anything you buy. Okay. And then you're, it's just, and then property tax, okay? Everything is taxed, all right? So in the end, they're getting close to about 50% of your income, okay? And then they, they're sending it, sorry, but they send it to places that they, instead of here, to help people here, uh, and also to line their own pockets with. So anyway, Let's get into scripture. Okay, so you can see here, uh, the the image behind me, you can't see it very well, so I'll, I'll pull this one up so you can see it a little bit better. Uh, so this is the image that's behind me uh, for the uh, for my background. And anyway, it's, it's a serpent, okay, but making the money symbol. And that's exactly what it is. When when you look back at old symbolism and things like that, they have a they have a serpent on a staff. It also goes to, uh, you know, also a serpent on a staff is is Moses in the wilderness, and anyway, and it, and it also represents the flesh on a on a pole, uh, which was Jesus uh, Jesus Christ's flesh was sacrificed for us on the cross. Okay, so. Um, Anyway, your flesh is the serpent, okay? If you look under a microscope at your flesh, it's literally flaky, just like a snake's skin, okay? And so, and also, it's, uh, we shed, we shed skin, not like 90% of dust in your house is caused by skin, okay? Your skin, your dry skin coming off. So, anyway, so uh, I just wanted to show you all that because it's, um, that's kind of what we're looking at here. And... Let's see. Okay, then um, obviously I've got this symbol here. So this is actually a supposed to be for like a tattoo. Okay, so, but anyway, you can see the serpent wrapped around hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Okay. So, all right. So getting into scripture. God's been, ha he's been, he's, he's been taking me all over this Bible, uh, here lately. I, I'm, and, uh, Josh is laughing at me again, my friend Josh, cause I, I'm back in Genesis again. So I'm back in Genesis chapter one, two, three. And, uh, I called him last week and said, I'm, I'm in Genesis five. He said, Oh, well, you're, you're moving up. <laughs> so anyway, he keep God keeps taking me back to, to Genesis, but, um, all right, so to get into some tithing scriptures, uh, let's start with 2 Corinthians chapter 9. And it's uh, verses 6 and 7. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Pastors love that verse, okay, because it's um it's saying like the the less amount you give to the church, meaning money, the the less amount you give 
then your harvest won't be very good either. Uh, you know, you, you won't reap uh, a good uh, amount back. Okay. Um, churches love to say that, you know, whatever you give, God's going to, God's going to bless you and give it right back or, or even give you double, double that back. Okay. And so anyway, it's, um, it's not what it's saying. <laughs> uh, tithing was never, it was never about money. Okay. It's, it's a, it's, it's a spiritual teaching as well. We're, we're going to get into all this, but, um, so, and the more that you give, the more you're going to get back. That's what pastors like to say about like this verse, but that's, it's not what it's saying. It, it's okay. So whatever you give out of yourself, okay. If you're just giving a little bit of yourself, okay, to, uh, to, to someone else or whatever, then don't expect much back out of anybody else. Okay. So, uh, you get, you get people that, um, you, you know, they'll, so, so some people, uh, they'll call you and you'll be there in a heartbeat, you know, um, like just like Josh, you know, my friend Josh, like and 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 my brother even, if if I needed something, uh like just help here on my place for whatever reason, um, I could make a phone call and they'd be here in a few hours. Okay. They'd drop what they were doing and come. Okay. My dad also. And so uh they would find a way, whatever is in their busy schedule, they would drop what they were doing and come help me. Okay. And the thing is, I would do the same for them. OK, if they needed me. So that's that's tithing. OK, that's tithing as well. OK, there's there's different ways of looking about tithing. But uh, say if say if I call somebody for help, uh, like my neighbor and he drops what he's doing and and comes to help me and he, and he helps me all day long with whatever I needed. OK, and then he goes back home and then next week he calls me and I'm not really doing much around here, but you know, but, but I say, well, you know, I, I've got, I gotta go do this later. And, um, I might be able to come help you for five or 10 minutes, you know, or something, but that's about all I can do today. All right. Well, there you go. That's uh, okay. So don't, if you get a lot out of someone or, or if you give a lot of yourself to somebody, you know, then they should want to give a lot back to you as well and, and help you out. Okay. So it, it works both ways. So, all right. So verse eight here in St. Corinthians in chapter nine, and God is able to make all grace abound toward you that ye always having all sufficiency in all things may bound to every good work as it is written he hath dispersed abroad. He hath given to the poor. His righteousness remaineth forever. Okay, so anyway, if you have, if you, people do need money. Okay, we, we live in a world where we do need money, but above all, we need, we need God. Okay, we can't do anything without him. Okay, so even if I had, even if I had everything taken from me, okay, Job is a, is a wonderful story about all this, okay? Even when you can't afford to do anything and, and you get everything taken from you, God will never leave you nor forsake you, okay? He's always there. And he's the main thing that you need, regardless. Everything on earth is material. It's it's a material thing. Uh, in fact, money itself is a, is a scam. It's it's a made up thing by people. Uh, we've we've taken paper and and printed some colors on it and some numbers on it and call it currency, okay? Currency, okay? Just like a water stream, it's a currency. It flows, okay? The money flows into the banks, okay? Like the bank of the river, all right? So money itself is a is a scheme as well, all right? So anyway but we've made it out to be that we can't we can't make it without it so uh proverbs chapter three let's see and in verse nine i've got i've got about 10 verses here to go through um honor the lord with thy substance and with the first fruits 
of all thine increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shalt thou bur shall burst out with new wine. Oh, gosh. Okay, so people want to use this verse too for tithing. All right. It's you. This is this these verses are talking about you. Okay, so honor the Lord with thy substance. Thy substance is you. It's your thoughts. It's not money. It's not your crops. It's not it, it's not anything you own physically. It's you. It's your thoughts. Okay. And the first fruits. Most people don't know what a first fruit is. A a first fruit is the first thing that comes to your mind or the first word that comes out of your mouth. That is the first fruit, okay? So that's why your first fruits have to be pure. They have to be good, okay? Because the when someone says something to you, even if they're angry, even if they say something out of anger to you, what is your first fruit back to them? Are you going to spout back anger back to them? OK, because that's not that's not what God calls us to do. OK, so uh, if they if they smite you on one cheek, turn them the also uh, the other also. Right. OK, so the first fruit isn't a fruit. It isn't a a crop. It isn't money. OK, it's it's the first thought that comes out of your head. OK, or the first word that comes out of your mouth that the tongue is sharper than any two edged sword. OK. So you got you need to think before you say something, all right? And if your first thought was to spout something back to them out of anger, okay, then you need to check yourself, okay? Because chances are you are spiritually disconnected from God. All right, so uh, so shall thy barns be filled with plenty, okay? Your the barn is you. You are the storehouse. The brain is the storehouse, okay? It stores all the thoughts, all the emotions, all the memory, everything. That's why they say on your cell phone, move it to the cloud, right? Job talks about the cloud, uh, clouds and things like that. Who hang, who hang, who hanged the clouds and everything else? Um, all right, so the cloud is your memory, okay? So that's exactly why our cell phones have a cloud to move pictures to, okay? So so shall thy barns be filled with plenty. You are the barn. Your brain is the barn. It's it's the it's the place of memory. It's the place of thought. It's the place of emotion. All right. And thy presses shall burst out with new wine. Y'all know what the new wine is? I, I did a video, uh, a few videos back, I think, where I was talking a little bit about the new wine. In in Acts chapter two, they're they're talking about these men are drunken on the new wine. In Joel chapter one, it talks about the new wine, okay? So uh, Noah stepped off the ark and planted a vineyard, okay, and got drunk, okay? Well, if he planted a vineyard and got drunk, that means it was new wine because he had to plant the vineyard, harvest the grapes, make the wine and drink it, okay? So it, it was it was new, okay? It was a new wine. That's, that's what it's teaching. It has nothing to do with with Noah was an alcoholic like like all the churches teach, Okay. He was not an alcoholic, as that we think of alcoholic. Okay, he was drunk on the new wine. Okay, it mean it means in so. Bear with me. Okay, the new wine is within you. Okay, it's the it's the it's the melatonin. Okay, that that flows up your spine. That's why Jacob saw angels ascending and descending. It's his spine. The stone he laid his head on wasn't a stone why, why why would he why first off why would he use a stone to lay his head on okay uh, it's not a soft pillow I, I would rather just lay my head on the ground okay than lay my head on a rock so anyway it's not talking about an actual stone and then and then he arose and anointed the the, the rock with oil right okay well he's not just dumping oil on this random rock that he laid his head on all night long okay after he wrestled with the man all night long okay excuse me, the, the stone says pineal gland, okay? It, the pineal gland, for, for all you that don't know about it, the pineal gland is in your brain. It's the size of a grain of rice, okay? With, with faith, the size of a grain of mustard seed, you can move mountains, okay? The mountains are your 
your built up issues over your lifetime. OK, they're not physical mountains that you that you can move out of the way. OK, you can't you can't do that. OK, the mountains are within you. OK, your mountains of guilt, your mountains of shame, your mountains of, of stress, your mountains of anxiety, your mountains of um, whatever the case may be, drugs, booze, women, men, whatever. OK, so anyway, those are the mountains that built that are building up within you okay so faith the size of grain and mustard seed can move mountains okay so it's your pineal gland all right so you can access the pineal gland through meditation and prayer okay so and i'm just asking you guys to hear me out on this because my whole life i was told to stay away from that type of teaching and then i, I was out in the yard and, and it's like god grabbed a hold of me and said who told you who told you not to seek me spiritually like this? And I had to think about it. And the answer was mankind. Mankind has always taught me to not look into it this way. And so then I started studying the Bible with more of an open mind to it. And lo and behold, it's on every single page of the Bible. Every single page of the Bible is teaching about you. The earth is you. And in other verses, the earth is the ground you're standing on as well, but you're made of the earth, okay? So in a lot of verses, the earth is you, okay? The um, uh, Egypt is your flesh, okay? So nothing good comes out of Egypt, right? It's your flesh, okay? And, and Israel is your spirit, uh, your, your born-again spirit, all right? So uh, the rivers that the Bible speaks of, they're within you as well, as well as, as I believe physically as well. Okay. So, uh, like the Red Sea and the Jordan river and, um, and, uh, the Nile, all that, I believe that they are literal places on the world. Um, and I also believe that they're within you as well. Okay. So we have the saying in, uh, in Christianity of, of, uh, crossing over the Jordan. Okay. That's within you. It's when you, it's when you cross over, all of the negativity, all of the death that's within you. So the 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 lower parts of you, the fleshly desire, the fleshly lust of the world, when you conquer those uh, and you step over Jordan that's within you, now you're starting to walk by the spirit, not by the flesh anymore. The Bible teaches us to walk by the spirit, not by the flesh, and circumcise your spirit from the flesh. Okay. So anyway, so anyone that's that's new to my videos and things like that. I, I just, I'm trying to explain it so you can understand what I'm saying about everything in that Bible is teaching about you uh, spiritually within you. So the Bible uses sevens all the time. Um, uh, so in, in Ezekiel at chapter one, we have uh, wheel within wheels. Okay. Um, so I, all right. So wheels, and seals okay in revelation we have the seals the seven seals and they're written on the back side okay it's your spine okay the seven seals written on the back side your back your spine okay so the hindus and i i don't condone i'm, I'm not saying i'm a hindu i'm not saying any of that but the hindus call them chakras okay and anyway but Ezekiel calls them wheels. Revelation calls them seals. Okay. And uh, so all through scripture, the sevens is, is within you. Okay. It's talking about your seven wheels or your seven heavens, your seven levels, your seven seals. Okay. Uh, it's all written within you. Uh, so your you have 12 gates on your on your brain. Okay. Um, I, I think they're called like ner uh, um, nerve nerve systems or i don't know i don't know the word anyway but you have 12 gates on your brain okay well we've got the 12 disciples okay we've got the uh we've got the uh, 12 months okay and and it, the list goes on and on and on okay so anyway i'm just saying all this so you guys can kind of understand what i'm trying to get at here so uh, but the barn is you, the barn is where your memory is stored. Okay. Just like in Genesis chapter 41, where, uh, Joseph went and opened up all the storehouses and fed the entire world with corn. The, the corn is a symbol of, uh, of, uh, spiritual awakening. Okay. Um, so anyway, it's opening up all the storehouses, right? In their barns. Okay. And they'll be filled with plenty, just like they were in Genesis chapter 41 with Joseph. 
and in the seven years of drought. Okay, seven years of drought. Just like I said earlier, seven years, seven, 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 seven. It's, all, it's always, it's within you. And the new wine, the new wine is the melatonin that flows up your spine and it, it, it um or it flows through your body, but it's um but anyway, but it it when it hits your pineal gland, it anoints it with oil. Okay, that's the oil, the melatonin, and it's it's also called chrism. Okay, well chrism is um also a where we get the name Christ from. Okay, Bible says that the kingdom of God is within you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Okay, Christ is physical. Okay, he's physical. Uh, he he came and died for us, but also he's within you as well. Okay, he never left you. All right, so he's within you, but you got to find him. You've got to search him with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Okay, so anyway, and when if you when you act when you activate the pineal gland, it it allows you to see spiritually. Okay, that's why in Ezekiel, that's why no one understands the book of Ezekiel. Okay, he's he's i'm in the spirit i'm out of the spirit i'm with the spirit okay so when you're reading ezekiel you have to understand he is in what we would call a meditation okay um or or prayer okay so anyway he's he's seeing things spiritually in the spirit uh job as well okay job sees a lot of things in the spirit okay so anyway that's what you have to understand is that it, it's teaching you a spiritual teaching, okay? And it's all within that individual, okay? And that individual is also you, okay? And just like the four horsemen of Revelation are within you, they're they're not gonna literally come out of the clouds, okay? They're, um, they're within you. So uh, Luke, Luke chapter six. And verse 38, give and it shall be given unto you. This is, goes back to what I was saying earlier. Like um, when you give to someone else, like your time, not, we're not talking money, your time, okay? Then it, it should be given back to you as well. They, they should want to help you too whenever you need help. All right, give and it shall be given unto you, good measure, pressed down and taken together and running over, and running over my cup runneth over, right? Shall shall men give into your bosom? There you go. For with the same measure that ye meet withal, it shall be measured to you again. All right. Now, this is a wonderful story, and I and I was talking about it with um in a live that josh and i did uh but in mark 12 starting in verse 41 it's the widow's offering okay so if y'all have never read this story um please go back and read it and and think about it um about what it's saying and it's it's um it pulls me it pulls me to tears now um and so anyway I'll, I'll read it and hopefully we can get something out of it here. And Jesus sat over against the treasury and behold, how the people cast money into the treasury and money that they, that were rich uh, and many that were rich cast in much. Okay. So right there, these people that have money, they had, they, um, say you've got $60 million in your bank account, okay? Hey, I'm going to write you a check for $10,000. Man, what a what a sum, right? And and they're making sure they're making sure that Jesus sees them do it, okay? They're making sure that Jesus sees them write that check, okay? And drop it in the offering, okay? And they even like, you know, do the the flip flip with the, you know, so he can see how much it is and then they drop it in, right? Okay, that's what they're doing. Okay, so anyway, uh, these people that have so much money, okay, and they're just dropping big amounts in, okay, and but they're they're missing the point, and I believe we've missed the point too. Verse forty-two, and there came a certain poor widow, 
and she threw in two mites, which make a farthing. Okay, so uh, so a farthing, uh, it's a it's a quadrants. Okay, a fourth part, a farthing, um, and a mite. Uh, there you go, something scaled in light. So, so it's it's not even talking about money. Still, it's talking about yeah. So, but if you if you read it fleshly, of just what it's saying, okay, uh, you get that this poor widow that didn't have anything uh, brought something forward too, okay. And anyway, let, let's keep reading here in verse forty three. And he yelled unto, or sorry, and he called unto him his disciples and saith unto them, Verily I say unto you that this poor widow has cast more in than all they which have cast into the treasury. For all they did cast in of their abundance, but she of her want did cast in all that she had, even all her living. So there you go. So these rich people, they're casting in uh, lump sums of money, but it's still not everything they have, you know. Um, and this poor widow comes along, and that's all she has. Well, that's all she has, and and she she gives everything she has. And in fact, I believe if you go back and read the the entire story, uh, she waits until um, until Jesus isn't looking at her. Okay, she did it when he wasn't looking. Okay, she didn't, and it wasn't out of uh, I don't believe it was out of embarrassment, okay? Um, but it, it was because she wanted to. She, just like just like it just said, she wanted to give it, okay? It wasn't that she felt like she needed to. It wasn't that she was pressed to do it, um, okay? That, uh, that the sermon that she just heard was about tithing your money and stuff and that she felt pressed to do it. It, it wasn't that, is that she... She felt she needed to do it and, and she wanted to do it. Okay. So uh, anyway, and she waited till Jesus wasn't looking. Okay. Well, Jesus still saw her do it and said that you, that she gave more than any of you. And they get, they get mad. They get mad about it uh, because what are you talking about? I wrote $10,000. She gave 50 cents, you know? So, well, it's because she gave everything she had. If you study the brain, okay. Um, now they say this has been debunked, but I I completely disagree because um, they they say that we um, uh, well what's been debunked is is the they or what they say has been debunked is they used to say that we use ten percent of our brain and now they're saying that we use a hundred percent of it. Mm, I think the majority of us use like two percent. <laughs> so if you look around at the world, you know. Uh, you know, I'd be surprised if people are even using 10% of their brain, okay? So there's times where even I think I'm only using 2% of my brain, okay? Uh, I just feel so dumb sometimes, all right? So that being said, it's the... I still believe that we are using 10% of our brain and it, and it's our, it's our left side. It's our left side thinking. Okay. Well, the left side controls like all oh, your, your worldly things. Okay. So, um, your right side is more connected to your artistic side, uh, and musical side, uh, and spiritual side. Okay. So like when you, when you're dreaming, that's why dreams don't make any sense, okay? It's because you, when you dream, you're actually in a spiritual place, okay? And they don't teach us that, but but that's what's going on. That's why a lot of dreams don't make any sense, okay? And that's why Pharaoh in Genesis had to have Joseph interpret his dreams for him, okay? Uh, he was he was a dream uh, interpreter, okay? So um, anyway, um, or was it Jacob? No. No, I think it was Joseph. Anyway, sorry. My mind just goes. Uh there we go with that with that 2% again. Uh anyway, but that's what it's talking about. So tithing your 10%, okay? It means give him everything you've got spiritually, okay? If you're using 10% of of that of that that little pea brain of the left side, 
okay, which is your uh, your fleshly desire to to get that get that alcohol, get get those drugs, get that woman, get that man, whatever the case may be. That's your ten percent, okay. So what Jesus is saying is, give that to me, give that fleshly lust, that fleshly desire over to me okay so that way i can fill your barn up i can get you drunk on the new wine okay so that is a good thing to be drunk on the new wine okay it's it's not it's not what church makes it to be that they're they're a bunch of alcoholics running around okay noah was a was a was an alcoholic that's that's not that's not what it's saying okay drunk on the new wine that's a good thing that's god's wine okay so anyway Give 10% of your left brain, which is like all we use, okay, over to him. And that is giving him everything you've got, okay? So anyway, I don't ask for much. I just ask for everything you've got, right? So anyway, that's what we used to say in the Marine Corps. And it's so true. Like uh, what what little you do use, give it over to God and let and let him overflow your cup but most of us hang on to that 10 percent, and we don't we just we just can't let it go okay and we just we just keep feeding it that that 10 percent your flesh we keep feeding it and feeding it and feeding it with what it desires with what it wants and so and then by doing that you never can see what god actually has for you and trust me it's much better than what the flesh has to offer so all right. So Leviticus, I know we're kind of all over the place here. I'm, I apologize, but Leviticus chapter 27 in verse 30. And all the tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the tree is the Lord's. It is holy unto the Lord. Okay, so all the tithe of the land, like I said earlier, the land, you are made of dirt, okay? You you are the earth as well in the Bible, okay? When the Bible's talking about earth, there's a lot of scripture where it's actually talking about your flesh, okay? And so tithing, so the tithing of the flesh, okay? Whether the seed of the flesh, okay? So, uh, Anyway, I'm not trying to put words in the Bible, I'm, I'm, but I am saying that if you step back and think about the land as being flesh, okay, it's it's giving what you've got from the flesh over to him, okay? So that's what it's trying to teach you, like giving your fleshly desire of everything of the world, the lust of the world, over to the Lord, okay? And God tells us to hate the things of this earth, okay? Well, why? OK, well, it's because of this. It's the it's the fleshly desire of the things of the world that aren't going to get you anywhere. OK, they're just going to uh, the more you have, the more you want. OK, so you're never going to be satisfied with the flesh, with its desires and with its lusts. OK, but God is the one that satisfies you. God is the one that overflows your cup with the new wine. OK, he quickens you and that's everlasting. OK. All this stuff that we have on earth, it it's gonna go, it's gonna go back to the earth, okay? Or somebody else is gonna end up with all your money that you worked your entire life for. Okay, when you die, all your money goes to someone else or the government or whatever. Okay. So anyway, everything you worked for stays here. Okay. So those are all fleshly things. So that's what I'm saying. Everything material is flesh. Okay. The things that you can't see are the spirit, okay? It's a house not made with hands, okay? That's the true meaning of life is seeking everything through the spirit and not by what your two eyeballs see. Start looking through what your spiritual eye sees, okay? Just as the Bible teaches. Uh, it, it, you know, the Bible says, uh, the Bible says that if thine eye be single, your whole body will be full of light. Okay. Well, they have a word for eyes. Okay. There's a lot of times in the Bible where um, it, it says eyes, plural. Okay. But why do so many verses just say I? Okay. So think about that. 
right? Because the pineal gland is also called the third eye, okay? So if thine eye be single, the whole body will be full of light, okay? So, and I get people to get upset with me over this, and I think it upsets them because it because it makes sense, <laughs> honestly. So anyway, but it makes sense, but it goes against everything they've ever been taught. So their automatic um, reaction is to get angry about this. And the Bible talks about two different ways of accessing the pineal gland. And one way is without Christ, okay? And one way is with him, all right? So uh, Christ rose from the grave. The grave is your lowest is the lowest part of you, okay? And and Christ ascends up and anoints you with oil, your pineal gland, okay? And he causes the the chrism, okay, the Christ oil to flow up and down your spine. I saw angels ascending and descending, okay? And Jesus was at the top, okay? So just as uh, Jacob said, all right? So um, people get so upset about this and I'm sorry, I didn't write the Bible. I didn't write it, but th this is what it's teaching you. Okay. So our whole lives, we've been taught the fleshly teaching of it. Just read it, just read it. Okay. And, and I've done that my whole life and, and I've gotten lots out of just reading the Bible. Absolutely. I became a better person just by reading the Bible. But once I understood it spiritually, it helped me so much more. And Anyway, and, but now trying to explain this to people, it's uh, it, it upsets them because they say, well, that's not what it says. And, and I'm like, it, it is what it says to your spirit. OK, the Bible's the Bible. God is spirit. OK, uh, we we can't we can't see God physically. So but we still believe in him. OK, you, we can't see air. OK, but we still know that air exists. OK, we can't see wind, but we see it uh, or we or but we can feel it. Right. We can see the grass moving. OK, so we know it's real. All right. So just because you can't see something physically doesn't mean it doesn't exist. OK, uh, just like you, like if they if they cut your head open, if you died and, and they cut your head open, they would see a physical brain in your head. OK, Um and but they would never see all the memory that your brain has. They'll never see all the thoughts that your brain had. They'll never see all the stress and the anxiety and the emotions that, that you went through in your lifetime in your brain. They won't see that. OK, they'll just see the physical part of it. OK, so that's what we're doing when we're just reading the Bible. We're seeing the physical part of it. We're seeing the the, the stories and you, and you still get things out of it. I'm not saying um, that you don't. OK. But once you start seeing it spiritually, you start seeing what the words are actually meaning. Okay, you start seeing what uh, the memory is, the thoughts of the Bible are. The you know if if I'm making sense, I hope I am. But anyway, so anyway, so if you're if you're just reading the Bible, you'll still get things out of it. But once God shows you how to read it spiritually, it means so much more to you, and that's when you realize that whole book is you okay it's it's the it's the battles that you're going through the armies of the north your thoughts okay uh locusts came out of the pit okay you are the pit you're the bottomless pit your brain is a bottomless pit of of anger of uh it can also be of of happiness it's your choice okay so but it's the bottomless pit of memory okay there your brain can hold an endless amount of information okay um and i i tend to be horrible at remembering people's names okay like you can come up and introduce yourself to me i can shake your hand as soon as we let go of hands i forgot your name okay and anyway so that being said the brain can hold an endless amount of information but we we don't know how to use it properly. That's why I forget people's names, okay? I, I still haven't figured out how to use my brain properly, okay? So anyway, I, I hope you all are kind of grasping what I'm saying. Um, got a few more verses here. Uh, Malachi chapter 3, And 
verses 8 through 10. Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. Ye are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Okay. I'm just trying to give out some scriptures here to help you all out. Uh, Matthew chapter 6, verses 1 through 4. Take heed that ye do not your alms, okay? Your alms before men. So don't, don't do it in front of people, okay? When you give, don't do it. it when you give, don't do not do it. So when the Bible says, don't do it in front of men, okay? What it's saying is don't do it out of, out of your pride. Don't do it um, for other people to see you and be like, be like, oh, look at him, you know? Uh, that way all eyes are on you for what you were doing, okay? That's what the Bible's saying. Don't, don't do it for in front of men, okay? Don't do it for all eyes to see you. Do it out of the, out of the pureness of, of your of your heart do it out of uh out of love out of out of respect for people and don't ever expect anything in return when you give something to someone don't ever expect something uh back from them okay uh i can't stand it when people are actually um needy okay and someone says well i i got 50 bucks here you know i'll, I'll give you 50 bucks but don't forget to pay me back OK, pay me back next week or something after you get paid. All right. There you go again with this doing it in front of men. OK. Uh, if you feel like you can give somebody some money or something to help them out. Don't expect it back. OK, do it out of love. Do it out of your want. The money is all material stuff anyway. Money comes, money goes. OK, and we're all here. Let's help each other out. OK. So anyway, when you give something, don't expect it back, okay? Just give it out of love, all right? All right. Before men. Uh, okay, to be seen of them. There you go. Otherwise, ye have no reward of your Father, which is in heaven, okay? So you're not going to get a reward if you're doing it, uh, if you're doing it to to impress people, okay? Uh, just like those those guys that we just read about in Mark chapter 12, right? They're, they're writing those big checks, those $10,000, $20,000 checks, okay? But they're making sure everyone sees them do it, okay? Well, they have no reward for that, okay? Therefore, when thou doest thine alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues, and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. There you go. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. So don't do it for the glory of men. Um, let's see. In the book of Haggai, in chapter 2, verse 8. Yeah. The silver is mine and the gold is mine, saith the Lord of hosts. The glory of this latter house shall be greater than the former, saith the Lord of hosts. And in this place, I will give peace, saith the Lord of hosts. The silver and the gold is you. OK, it's uh, all right. So if you think about. Um, you know, the Bible uses a lot of metals to explain things. Okay. So, uh, lead is, is more abundant, uh, or, or, um, uh, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, that's right. Okay. Lead is more abundant than brass. Okay. So that's why brass is worth more than lead. Okay. Uh, lead is more abundant than silver. That's why silver is worth more than brass. Silver is more abundant than gold, okay? That's why gold is worth more than silver, okay? So silver and gold, okay? Silver and gold are the finest, okay? They're the finest of the of the metals, okay? And so, um, but they're they're more rare than the others, okay? So 
that's you, okay? Be a peculiar person, as the Bible puts it, a peculiar people, okay? Come out of her, okay? Come out of the ways of the world. Come out of Babylon. Come, you know, uh, quit, quit whoring yourself out. Sorry, I, I'm just putting it the way the Bible puts it. Quit whoring yourself out to the lusts of the flesh, okay? And God refines you through the crucible, okay? So, um through fire, just, just like John the Baptist. Uh, I baptize you with water, okay? But uh, but there's one coming that's going to baptize you with fire, okay? Well, that's it's the crucible. It, the the word, um, uh, Josh, I think Josh did, my friend Josh did a video on it uh, not too long ago, but, uh, and I can't remember the Greek word, but the Greek word for, um, for the, uh, the, like the lake of fire and stuff like that isn't, an actual lake of of fire like it, it's a it's 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 a crucible it's a it's a small more like a pond okay it's it's like a vessel excuse me and so anyway all of your wickedness of you your evil your the thoughts okay all those are cast into the lake of fire which is the crucible it's it's actually a little tiny thing okay um Anyway, but they're crucified there, okay? Uh, and so, and purified, just like you throw fine metals into a crucible and put the crucible in a forge, okay? And then you heat the, the metals up to burn out all the impurities out of it, okay? And so uh, when, they're, when they're refining gold, uh, they can add like little bits of silver into that gold to make it a more, a mere, a more pure gold, okay? A, a higher carrot, Okay, so anyway, so that's what they're, that's what God's showing you, okay? He refines you through fire, okay? So it's, but it's, it's up here, okay? It's not through money. It's not through anything we've been taught it is. Okay, so uh, there you go. As I said, uh, the glory of this ladder house, that's your spirit, okay? It's a house not made with hands. The glory of this ladder self, the the or ladder house, it's the it's the ladder self. Okay. Okay. So what God does to you, what God does to you makes you not be the person you once were. Okay. That's what it's saying. So he purifies you, runs you through the crucible. Okay. Burns out all the impurities. Okay. Uh the glory of this latter house shall be greater than the former. Okay, that was your fleshly desire, your less of the world way of living, saith the Lord of hosts. And in and in this place will I give peace. In what place? Okay. In this place I will give peace. The, the city of Jerusalem is called city of peace. Okay, that's what Jerusalem means. All right, so... But this is in your thoughts. This is in you. This is all inside of you. Okay. So the city of peace is right here. Okay. Once he once he quickens that. Okay. And so they have what they call the um uh the pineal gland turns to crystal. Okay. So um anyway, it's the stone, right? It's the stone that Jacob laid his head on. It's it's it turns to crystal. Okay, so. Anyway, um, but once he quickens that, you become someone that you never have been before, and it and it's in a good way, okay? So, but the city of peace is Jerusalem, and Jerusalem is right between your left and your right hemisphere, and it's um, your pineal gland, okay? The city of peace. So once that is anointed by God, then nothing but peace comes over you. All right, so Acts chapter 20. In verse 35, I have shewed you all things, how that so laboring you ye ought to support the weak and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus. How he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. There you go. You should want to give to the needy, okay? 
anything that you can spare to help somebody out. And it doesn't have to be money. Okay. If, if they're needing help cleaning their house, go help them. Okay. Uh, if they want to go on a vacation, offer to offer to take care of their dog while they're gone, you know, or, or, or feed their chickens or their cow or milk their cow for them, whatever, you know, offer that. Okay. That's tithing as well. Okay. It's giving your time, your, uh, it's giving yourself to someone else. Okay. Um, anyway, to help them out. Okay. So, and it, and if it, if it has to be money, so be it, you know, like if they're running short and they can't make the payment this month, if you have a little bit extra, give it to them, you know, and don't expect it back. That's where people fail at it is because now they're doing it to impress. Well, I have a little extra money. I'll, I'll give it, I'll help you out. You know, like quit doing that. If, if you give something to somebody, don't expect it back. Give it out of the pureness of your heart. Okay. Last bit right here. We're on the home stretch. Genesis. Um, no, sorry, we're not. Two more verses. False alarm. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 28 through 29. At the end of three years, thou shalt bring forth all the tithe of thine increase the same year and shalt lay it up within thy gates the gates are in your brain okay so um let's look what it just said again at the end of three years so in the bible three represents a new beginning uh to start over um uh, Christ rose on the on the third day after he was crucified. Uh, as Jonas was in the belly of the well three days and three nights, so will the Son of Man be. It's all through your Bible, okay? Three represents a new beginning, a, to start over, okay? So whenever you bring your 10% of your of your your pea brain, the left side, okay, that, that lusts after the things of the world, when you give that over to God, and now you're and now you're walking by the spirit, not by the flesh anymore. And you no longer have any desire of anything of the world, any material thing. OK. Now you're a three, if that makes sense. It means that God makes you a new beginning, a new creature, as he puts it. OK, so anyway, it's a new you. All right. Uh, shall bring forth all the tithe. OK, tithe is 10 percent. OK of thine increase the same year and shall lay it up within thine gate thy gates okay the gates are what i mentioned earlier the 12 12 gates in your brain just like the new jerusalem has the 12 gates okay the new jerusalem that seems to trigger some people <laughs> and the levite because he hath no part nor inheritance with thee, and the stranger, and the fatherless, and the widow, which are within thy gates, within thy thoughts, within thy brain, okay, shall come, and shall eat, and be satisfied, that the Lord thy God may bless thee in all the work of thine hand, which thou doest. All right, now we're on the home stretch. Uh, la uh, last verse is right here. It's Genesis 28. Verses 20 through 22. And Jacob vowed a vow, saying, If God will be with me and will keep me in this way, that I go and will give me bread to eat and raiment to put on, so that I come again to my father's house in peace. Okay, my father's house in peace. The father's house is within you. Okay, it's 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 right up there in your brain. Okay, father's house in Jerusalem, the pineal gland, city of peace. Then shall the Lord be my God. And this stone, just like I said earlier, the stone, your pineal gland. And this stone, which I have set for a pillar, 
shall be God's house. And of all that thou shalt give me, I will surely give the tenth unto thee. There you go. Give that 10% of your left side thinking over to God. Okay. When you give that 10% to him of your fleshly desire, okay, lusts of the world, all that, when you give that 10% of it, of it over to God, that means you gave everything you had over to him. Okay. And you don't care about a dadgum thing on this earth anymore. Okay. You don't care about money anymore. You don't care about women or men. You don't care about uh, about booze or about drugs and things like that, okay? As I started to say earlier, and I, I guess I got sidetracked and forgot, the Bible talks about two different ways of accessing your pineal gland, okay? One is the way of the Tower of Babel, okay? The Tower of Babel, it's a spiritual teaching as well, and I, I, I believe the Tower of Babel to be a, uh, a physical place as well, Okay, so that's how we have to read the Bible. It, it's it's a it's a physical teaching as well as a spiritual teaching all in one. Okay, so once you understand the physical, that's that's the truth side of it. The Bible says, "Worship me in spirit and in truth." Okay, so once you once you can read the Bible and understand what it's saying to your flesh, okay, that's the truth side of it. Now seeking through the spirit and try to understand what it's saying spiritually. Okay, so the Tower of Babel. I believe it to be a physical place, okay? And I don't believe it's over across the pond in the in the Middle East, okay? So, because it does not fit the Bible description at all, okay? So, uh, anyway, that being said, there's a lot of things in the Bible that don't fit over there, okay? That's owned by the Rothschilds over there. Uh, they purchased Jerusalem in the 1800s, okay? Do you think that the promised land of the people of God would sell their promised land. Okay. Come on. Anyway, the promised land is right here as well. Okay. So it's it's within you. The land flowing with milk and honey. Okay. Your brain produces a natural sugar. Uh, it also uh, produces a milky substance. I can't remember the, what they call it, what the scientists call it or whatever. But but anyway, but whenever the pineal gland is activated, uh, it starts flowing with like a milky substance, uh, such as like the melatonin, okay, and um, or the chrism. And it also produces a sweet savor or, or a sweetness, a sweet substance. Okay, so that's the sweet incense. Anyway, so the, it's the land flowing with milk and honey, okay? Um, I showed a verse in here in a few videos back. I think it's in Numbers. Um, um, hang on just a second. Let me see if I can find it here. Um no okay i can't remember what um i think it's in numbers somewhere but anyway it's talking about the uh these giant tribes uh it talks about the hivites the the uh the 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 perizzites the jebusites uh the amorites but it mentions six giant tribes in in one verse Okay, and then the, the last land that God brings you to is the land flowing with milk and honey. Okay, that's right here. The other six are your fleshly lust, your fleshly desire. That's why Christ ascends from the grave, which is the lowest part of you. He ascends up and he he is uh, conquering all those giant tribes within you. Uh, the the six wheels, okay, Um that like Ezekiel talks about, or the or the seals, okay, the, that Revelation speaks of, okay. So Christ conquers those six of your flesh, okay. And once he gets out of that sixth and he goes to the seventh, that's when the pineal gland is activated, and that's the land, and he causes the melatonin and the chrism to flow, the chrism, the Christ oil, to flow through you, okay. And so that is the um, the anointing 
okay? And it's the land flowing with milk and honey, all right? So anyway, I hope that this helped uh, y'all out. And did I, uh, did I finish reading all that? I think I did. Uh, yeah okay um anyway but yeah so the stone once again that's your that's your pineal gland uh same same as like when uh when jacob laid his head on the stone it's talking about the pineal gland the stone in the exodus the pineal gland okay moses smite the stone uh twice in 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 uh in one uh, verse and then another time he smited it another time uh, so altogether he smite that stone three times and he wasn't allowed into the promised land because he did it out of anger okay and going back to what i was saying earlier like the like the tower of babel okay so these uh children of men okay they were uh or sons of men they were trying to access the pineal gland without christ okay they were trying to ascend within themselves and make themselves out to be god himself okay uh thinking that they were god himself okay and accessing it without christ okay so anyway so and there's there's a there's a word somewhere in the story of babel if you go and break down the words in the in the hebrew there's a word in there that has to do with drugs okay that people still use to this day um so anyway the the uh but so I have a feeling that's how they were doing it. They were they were trying to access or activate their pineal gland through drugs. Okay, so, um, and then in uh in the New Testament we have the the wise men. Okay, the wise men bringing frankincense and myrrh to Jesus. Okay, well frankincense and myrrh are basically opium. Okay, they're they're drugs. Okay, and I'm not saying don't 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 get upset. I, I'm not saying that they're bringing uh, drugs to Christ, and that's what and that's what Jesus uses to to see spiritually as drugs. I'm, I'm not saying that frankincense and myrrh were actually worth more than gold. Okay, so it's a teaching of them them bringing the most expensive things that the land had to offer that they had to offer. Okay, as as a gift. Okay, so anyway, uh, there's a whole new teaching with frankincense and myrrh. Uh, maybe I'll do a video on frankincense and myrrh sometime but uh but yeah if you go look it up the uh the frankincense and myrrh are a drug um and they actually uh stimulate the pineal gland okay so but just like the tower of babel i i believe they're trying to access that through like um through drugs and things like that and so that's why when people uh of course i've i've never i've never been high or anything like that but um the people that have been high, they 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 say that they see things. Uh, some people see serpents. Okay, some people see half serpent, half people uh, beings. Okay, just like the <laughs> just like the Naga in Genesis chapter three. Okay, Eve says, uh, "Neither shall you touch it, lest you die." That word "touch" in the Hebrew is Naga. Well, if you go look up what a Naga is, it's a half serpent, half human. Okay, so anyway uh it, it's so whenever you're accessing the trying to access the pineal gland through uh drugs or something like that then you're ascending within yourself without christ okay uh without his protection without his anointing okay and so who knows what could happen okay who knows what you might see okay and and uh and i believe that's also how people can tend to get possessed and things like that so um i could be wrong about about that but but i i tend to think that's how people can uh get possessed as well as is by going without christ okay um so but the bible gives specific directions on how to use christ within you to ascend to your pineal gland and that way when it's activated he is with you okay he fights your battles for you and he conquers all the all the wickedness within you he conquers all the the giant tribes within you Okay, and he moves the mountains. Uh, he causes the walls of Jericho to fall down. Joshua walked uh, 
for six days, he walked around the, the walls of Jericho one time for six days. And then on the seventh day, he walked around the walls seven times. OK, it's your it's your wheels within you. It's the seals within you. OK, it's not saying that he actually walked around the walls and they come crumbling down. OK, um, so anyway, it, it's 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 within you, your walls, your walls that you've built up over your lifetime. OK, that make it to where you can't see spiritually okay whether that be anxiety stress whatever like these things that you just keep building up building up and building up uh and then all of a sudden you snap and you get angry and you start yelling at someone or whatever those are walls okay uh just like in um i believe it's in the book of joel where they where they come over the walls and into your houses okay they come over your walls because you haven't broken those walls down okay in your own life so those demons come over the walls and into your house okay and basically possess you or, or kill you as the bible puts it so anyway it it's all it's on every single page once you see it but anyway i told you all it would be uh that i'd try to be quick but it didn't work out so well so anyway I hope y'all are having a good day and I hope you continue to have a good day. Uh, it's raining here, but it's, uh, I think it's like 62 degrees. And so I got to go out and, and uh, battle the rain and try to get something done. So, but anyway, I hope y'all enjoy the video and, and I hope this helps out. So if you have any other questions, um, please feel free to message me on this channel. Um, and, uh, and if you need to talk about any, any deeper things, uh, that you don't want to be seen in the chat, uh, send me your number uh, in the in the comments or something, um, and ask ask me to call you or something, and I'd be I'd be more than happy to call you um, if you need prayer or or whatever or or just need someone to talk to, I'd be more than happy to talk with you. So anyway, I love y'all and have a wonderful day.